Listen up. It's the number one voice of the Tri-State. Uh, I'm number one. It, 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 it's, it's cooking, cooking up, up 215. So let the show begin. Here we go. You already know who it is. It's your host with the most smooth. What's up, beautiful people? It's your girl, Stormy P. And this is Cooking Up 215. We got a special guest with us today. We got the check cashing, neck snapping, mm. Dave Anderson in the mm. building. What's up? What's up? What's up? Thank you so much for having me. Glad to have you, man. Glad to have you. Man. This is a uh, you know true honor, you know, cooking up. We just getting back to it, but you are a well known guy. You've been around the block. Yeah, you know You've what? You've been around <laughs> Breakfast Club. You didn't well, you didn't done it all. So right, yeah. we appreciate you coming down here with us. Man, listen, this is, this is home. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like you got to take care of your home. Like I don't, uh, I don't believe in being bigger than the room. But like there's certain things. Like if you notice, like there's a lot of entrepreneurs here, but you never see me with them. Mm. It's no beef. Mm. I'm a special event. Yeah. Like, I don't make my bread and butter by showing up and dancing. You right, know what I'm saying? Right. I make my bread and butter by actually going out and building and doing businesses. doing your thing. Yeah. I love that. But, you know, when I'm home, man, and I see good people doing good things, like, why wouldn't I come? Yeah. It's much That's appreciated. Cool. Much appreciated. You know, I'm hoping I'm going to definitely pick your brain. I'm going to get all, of, all already of know. the sales tips, you know. There's you're, a chef here, so it's okay. <laughs> you're, you're, <laughs> oh, oh, so we pay you in the sandwich, like you told Trey Songs to give you a sandwich and you can Listen. Go. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Oh my God! Which one of y'all? Oh man, and he's singing. Listen, it you works. Do, you do a lot. I, I've done. I've done a few things. So like, you used to sell alarm systems and everything. Yeah, I did. Worked for ADT. Yeah, yeah well, that came later. I worked for Honeywell. Uh, Honeywell has uh, home security systems, okay. and I was going around to people who had ADT systems, and I was taking bolt cutters and cutting their systems. What for? What? So you was cutting so, these systems I'm sorry, so they could like, call you to get this? No, not even that. I would do it during a demonstration. Here's why, uh, right? Oh, okay. Mm. I'm a good guy. Son, brother, nephew of cops. Right. I'm not going to hurt you. Right. But imagine I wasn't. Right. Mm. Imagine if I've been watching you. And imagine I know you got the ADT system and who you going to call now? So now you want to call gonna... Honeywell. Exactly. Because I, I was your sales wireless. numbers were great. I was right. number one in the company. <laughs> I know your sales numbers were great. I was number one in the company, and so ADT went and uh, bought my contract out. What? To get you to come back? Yeah, get me to come to ADT. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Oh, come so on, they, black man? You yes. selling like that. I was selling like you that. You selling on another low where they come in and they, they buying your contract. They making you come come yeah. on back to the team. That's the, that, yeah, that's the idea. That's amazing. How many, how many sales books have you written so far? Sales books? Yeah, like you're yeah, pitching. You had, I, I, uh, sell I, I it was, like Jesus. Sell like Jesus. Pitch, close up, sell, repeat. Uh, branding yourself. I did a, I did one on like the Pokemon Go um, game when that was hot. I've done uh, probably about six, seven sales books. Sheesh. Yeah, sell it like Jesus is my favorite. I've, run, I've written 21, but out of mm-hmm. those six or seven are specifically sales. Okay, so Mr. Snapping Next and Cash and Checks. Woo. I need to know. Yes, ma'am. Why does IG treat you like a bitter baby mom? Um, <laughs> if you don't know, <laughs> if you don't know what I mean, first he like couldn't go live, couldn't then he could only live. join other people's lives, yeah. and now like his main account got disabled. Mm-hmm. Right. Who you beefing with at IG? Let me know. I don't know. You're you not know. sharing the I money. Don't mm. listen. IG don't like that. The, the you thing of it is, the, you know what I mean. Zucks wants what Zucks wants. Not Zucks. Yeah. <laughs> And the thing of it is, he doesn't like people like me who know how to manipulate the system without having to spend money on ads and things of that mm. nature. And so, like, these things are to be expected. So, somebody, un- if I unfollow 30 people too quickly, oh, violation, let's get him off of here. Really? Mm. Yeah, and it's funny, when it happened, I talked to Reza Islam. He was like, congratulations, my brother. You've graduated. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. Because they stay blackballing uh, Reza. Yeah, man. Mm. Yeah. Because he's, he's enlightening people. Right. And that's mm. the thing. Yeah. It's, it's about... Our growth. We continue to look for other people to do for us what we have been doing ourselves. We've just lost sight of it, mm. right? Like all my aunts and uncles, with everybody except the exception of my mom, were born in black hospitals. My mom was an emergency, so she was born in a hospital that wasn't black. Mm. But we had black hospitals, we had black lawyers, we had black doctors, we had black everything. Right. You know what we wanted? We wanted to sit at the lunch counter. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So my whole thing is, if we know that 27% of people who graduate from college work in what they uh, majored in, that means 73% didn't. And we also know one of the main reasons why we can't get housing where we want to, why we can't get the loans that we want to, why we can't make the moves that we want to, is because we're in crippling student loan debt. Mm-hmm. That's heavy. So if I can help you get out of that without having to go get a degree to please your mama, right. then I kind of upset the system. 
And is is that your is that your goal when you're teaching everybody how to get out there and go get it? Is you trying to empower them to you know self employment to go out there and just you know be your own boss. Even if you don't want to be your own boss, own the things that will allow you to live free. Why would I? Tr- Do you know the one thing you can't buy or can't make any more of? Time. Damn right. Mm. Mm-hmm. I can always get some land. Mm. Okay, what nobody says. Land is finite, but I can get some. Mm-hmm. Time. You, do you know how much an hour is to somebody who's 40, 49 minutes away from their uh, the person that they love? Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like, that mm. means you, you got a window. You got a park. You got to get up there. And be lucky you got three minutes left. Right. You see what I'm saying? Like, time is important. So buy back your time. If you're, if you're having a full-time job, right, and that full-time job says that you get five vacation days, mm. How is any entity going to tell you that all you have is five days to, to enjoy yourself and rest, spend time with your family? You ain't got to tell me because that, that's always been my thing. And I can't have it. I mean, Smooth, if I'm being honest, bro, like, if you know what a job actually is, you'd never work one. Right. It is the monetization of your gifts, skills, and talents. Mm. So that means that they hired you because you have gifts, skills, and talents that they can monetize. So if they can monetize your gifts, skills, and talents, why can't you? Right. Now, I have a question. What advice do you have for people who want to be an entrepreneur and want to go into these things for themselves, but they haven't really found their niche? Mm. You found your niche. You just don't know how to go about making money with it. Mm. Give me a niche. Anything. Mm. I don't know. I mean, what about like to collect I stamps? Great. Do you have any idea how many stamps are worth like $32,000? Some stamps are worth half a million dollars. Do you realize that there are people right now on eBay who just went through their uh, went through their attic and found old books of stamps because great grandpa Skippy used to collect stamps? Mm. They don't have time to go through those. You could buy that book off of eBay for $32 and then go get it appraised and find out how much each of those stamps are worth. That's true. So let's talk about you. In your past, you got, mm-hmm. you know... You've been doing radio since you were about nine, nine years or so. Old. You've been in, in yeah. the radio game. Yeah. So you used to produce for Wendy Williams, mm-hmm. executive producer of Ricky Smiley Show. Yep. So how did you end up not even in that area anymore? Uh. How did you end up in the sales <laughs> part? Like, how did you? Um, sometimes in entertainment, they catch you up on the fact that you're entertaining. Mm. And they don't really let you see the real game that's being played while you're entertaining people. Right. Is so the money making side. It's the money making side, and it's also how they they leverage your skills to close deals. And so I was going out with the salespeople, thinking I'm just being a good team player, mm-hmm. but I'm closing the deal. So they're getting twenty percent commission, and I'm getting a five hundred, one thousand, fifteen hundred dollar talent fee every week. Mm. But I'm like, how much is that package every week? And if the package is twenty five thousand, and you're only giving me five hundred, you know, five hundred thousand, fifteen hundred. The math ain't mathing for me. Math ain't right. mathing. Right? Also, I would give certain ideas, and then people would ignore those ideas, and then they, you know, they 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 whitewash, whitewash, whitewash them and put them through the system, mm-hmm. and then next thing you know, I've come up with an idea, and a I'm like, great idea, right? <laughs> like, like, like I didn't just see that. <laughs> I just literally just all right. So I said, you know what? Fuck this. I'm retiring. And I realized that the one thing that happens if everything on your resume is TV, radio, film, stand up. They, they try to keep you in there. They, 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 they don't trust you being at a regular job. Bitch, I just want to feed my family. Mm. I don't have that type of pride. I ain't mm. above nothing. I ain't below nothing. Right. So the only jobs that would take a risk on me were sales jobs. And there's one thing. I, there's two things I can do with this mouth. Eat. Shut up. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> I felt it in the force. Eat. <laughs> And talk to you. So if I can talk to you, if I can build a rapport, if I can build a relationship with you, right. you're going to trust me enough to buy what I'm selling. Now, I stand behind quality products because I'm not nasty and I got to go home and I want to sleep at night. You know, right, it's the whole thing right. about mm-hmm. being you know, from Philly and you don't want to really have your name out here dirty. Because yeah, um, there's some people got their name out here dirty. Mm-hmm. Um, I stood behind everything I sold. Mm-hmm. And you know that's how I ate. And I never looked back at that point. So when did... I know you, you, you speak a lot about being homeless, mm-hmm. like you said it earlier. So when did that happen? Was that before the sales? Uh, yeah, that was before the sales. That was, and that was before radio as well? No, or? that was after radio. Um, so After the Wendy situation? Yeah, Wendy happened in 2000, right? right? Basically what happened, and people like to write me out of history because I know certain things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but basically what happened, when I, got out, when I got to Power 99, I was at Radio 1 first. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Me and D. Lee, legendarily D. Lee, without D. Lee, there's no Laugh House, there's no Kevin Hart, there's no Michael Blackson, there's no me. Right? Um, he was like, look, we're going to go across the street because they're getting ready to cancel us over here. I said, all right, bet. What's the deal? He said, just stick with me. I got you. So we did our last show that morning. I went to Temple, did my final. And that afternoon, we was at the Gallery Mall with Golden Boy doing afternoons. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So that situation was a good situation. But they already had a me there. His name is QDZ, a.k.a. Quincy Harris. They already had a me. Mm-hmm. Right. And he already had a license. I didn't have a license because I was, it's Philly. Who need a license? Right. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So... Mm-hmm. It wasn't on, it, there was, and this is not, I love Quincy, I grew up with Quincy, that's my man. There was not room for two of us. You right. know what I'm saying? So at that point, I got lovingly let go, and Wendy said, the next time I see you, you'll be successful. The next time she saw me was when I was walking her into my studio for Ricky, and Ricky was in 30 Markets. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. if you got it, you can get it anywhere. So I left there, went to, um, went to North Carolina, blah, blah, blah. So getting back to the homeless thing. After the things that happened with me and Ricky Smiley mm-hmm. happened, um, everybody thought I was either good or they just wasn't going to rock with me. Mm. So at that point, you know, I was known as Radio Tupac. I get shot. Oh, I wait out oh my, my non-compete. First off, fuck your bitch. You know oh what I'm saying? <laughs> so I would just go talk shit about the station I left and I'm going to destroy them with everything I knew. Right. That's how it is. I'm a gunslinger. I'm make you feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you, you going to hurt. Oh, right. you going to let me go? Oh, you going to live with regret. <laughs> You will wake up every day like, damn, so mm. like that temptation that, that that got kicked out and then they replaced him with David Ruffin. They had my girl and he got all pissed off. Oh my yeah. I want you to feel that <laughs> every time you see me, right? You look up, you see a billboard, you get pissed. Mm. So anyway, um, I wound up homeless because nobody would, everybody thought I was either good or they wouldn't touch me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, cars get, you know, let go and then. Lady League, because you ain't bringing in the bread, all that type of dumb shit. Yeah. And so I wound up um, homeless, and I took a gig selling, um, uh, setting appointments for merchant processing machines. Okay. Mm. And uh, I, would go to, I would go to sleep at night in my truck, and I'd park my truck in the Walmart parking lot in between tractor trailers so nobody would grab Nobody's my stuff. Seen, yeah, yeah. yeah, so. And I washed up every day in a quick trip gas station. Wow. Like, full-on horror bath, you know. <laughs> spectacles, testicles, wallet, and watch. You know, bird bath. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You think that was a major thing? Is that like the fire behind right. the whole? I, I always had a fire. Empire that you built I on. always had a fire, but that particular thing was like, I'm never going. That's never going to be my bottom. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like my my nightmare is most people's wet dream. Now, you see what I'm saying? Mm. Okay. But I just that will never be my rock bottom. My kids mm. will never know that. Right. You know, so that that's it for me. I think that you are one of the most brilliant people that I've ever encountered. Only because I just love to hear you speak and the things that you come up with. And one of the most brilliant things that I've heard you put together is the um, cheese steak social. The cheese steak social. At Bully Kind. Yeah. Just a little bit about that. Here's the thing. I don't like networking events. Networking doesn't work. Right. Real mm-hmm. networking is, you know, smooth is my guy, right? Smooth needs something. If smooth needs something, I'm going to look out for smooth because that's my guy. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get that over five minutes of cocktails and business cards. It's just not going to happen. And the fact that they continue to teach Negroes this is absolutely <laughs> mind boggling to me, right? So then you got this, this, this era, this, this, this air or this attitude that people have mm-hmm. where it's like, oh, we're going networking. And it's just like, fuck out of here <laughs> you corny like so for me i was like when are people the least pretentious when they holding a cheesesteak you cannot be bougie with a cheesesteak that's right. true so that's i true. created a cheesesteak social because i wasn't gonna do an ice cream social i'm a grown ass man but everybody likes cheesesteaks mm-hmm. oh you don't you don't eat beef that's cool we got chicken oh you don't eat chicken we got vegan that's, that's okay i wanted to know if y'all had chicken cheesesteaks <laughs> well, all right y'all talking about all this food y'all gave me a little hungry so you already know what time it is we're gonna take this break We're going to get to this food. It's your man, Smooth. It's your girl, Stormy P. We got Dave Anderson. And this is Cooking Up 215. We'll be right back. It's our favorite part of the show. That's your favorite. Yes, sir. Ah, chef. What you got cooking? You already know. What's up, beautiful people? It's your girl, Stormy P. And we are back with Cooking Up 215. And today, we got my girl, Davida Lee, from Exquisitely Catering Company. How you doing, girl? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Listen, you brought this food over? Yes. Ugh. 
the mouthless mortarin. Talk to me about what we got today. All right, today I brought you guys over my signature six cheese mac and cheese. I have green bean, I promise I'm um, green bean. Mm. I'm sorry, and then I have a braised lamb shoulder with a honey Thai sauce on top. Mm. Is this parsley, cilantro? What is this? It's parsley, just a little fresh parsley. Oh, little color. parsley on it, y'all. <laughs> uh. Now, let these people know where they can find you at. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, at Exquisitely Catering Co. Um, email me at exquisitelycateringco.com. And you can find me any time of the day, every day of the week, for whatever meal you would like to have. You can find her in this bomb mac and cheese, okay? <laughs> Make sure you girls, or guys, hit my girl up. The 90s Nia Long Cut is popping. The chocolate is popping. The skin is flowing. It's your girl Stormy P. Out here we're cooking up 215. Let's get back to the show. All right, beautiful people, back again, cooking up 215. It's your girl, Stormy P. It's your boy, Smooth. And we got my guy, Dave Anderson, in the building. Yeah. Do you see this lovely food? I do. I heard the mac and cheese is better than mama's. Listen, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Now, question. Do you think it's going to be better than your mama's? Yeah, because, yeah, no, most definitely. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Most you, you playing a dangerous game today, yeah. brother. Yeah, no, no, because she, she said it with so much confidence. I don't, I don't mm. doubt it. She, she, like, she said that, like, yeah, mm. with meaning. Mm. Now, we were talking about a few things before the break, yeah. and we're talking about your journey and yeah. all the things you've accomplished. So I wanted to ask, what was the moment where you really sat back and said to yourself, like, I think I'm popping a little bit. Like, did I make it? Is this <laughs> it? Is it it for me? I, I don't think that moment's ever going to come. I think I, I'm really? not going to be alive to see that moment. You think so? Yeah. With all the things that you've already mm -hmm. accomplished? Absolutely. Why? Um, I don't fit the narrative. Mm. Here, here's what I mean by that. If I were Lee Daniels, yeah, all day. If I was Tyler Perry, absolutely. If I was some type of coon and buffoon, by all means. <laughs> Shucking and jiving. <laughs> those that are going to do it all those that day. <laughs> you know, but the thing of it is, when you're somebody who is everything that they say you're not supposed to be, that, that you can't be, you know, I'm, I'm not dead, I'm not in jail, you know, I don't have, you know, a bunch of kids running around here, mm. you know what I'm saying? I, I've never paid child support in my life because I don't have those issues, mm. you know what I'm saying? I, I have a beautiful family, kids. you know, like, everybody's good, like, that's not a narrative that you hear, right? Right? I didn't, I didn't rob anybody, I ain't steal from anybody, I ain't cheat nobody, you know, so... Are you sure you're a real person? Yeah, unfortunately, okay. I am. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can show you the stretch marks, but you're eating, so. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I just don't think that's, that's going to, I've never had that moment. I've had moments where I was like, oh, this is great, mm. you know? And let me put it to you like this. You ever play Super Mario Brothers? Yeah. All right. You know, every time he goes, right, it's like, I'm sorry, Mario, but your princess is in another castle. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, what, what was my break with Wendy? Nope, because there's a million one things that happened after that. Yeah. Was my break with Ricky? Nope, because there's a million things that happened after that. Yeah. Was my break with Les Brown? Nope, because there's a million things that happened after that. There's never a final level. The final level is death. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And I think that people will look back at my body of work and say, okay, this dude really... Did a lot, which is why I'm doing my docu series. Mm, you know, okay. so we let, as black people, we let other people control our narrative and tell mm -hmm. our story. And tell our story. I was yeah. like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. And not on some Antoine Fisher, like Dave Chappelle said, I couldn't be Antoine Fisher because <laughs> I would, you know, add in a few things with it. No, like I'm, I'm very, I'm very raw. I'm very honest because when you look at your past, you're not looking at you. You're looking at somebody you used to be. Mm, right. That's heavy. You know, so like when people come in, they were like, you want me to tell everything? Yeah, say whatever your truth is. Right. You're not talking about me. You're talking about 28-year-old me. That right. dude been gone. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like growth, you get to see that. And I tell people, I said, once, once you see it, you know, you realize I, I won in the end. Mm. Right. You know what I mean? I don't answer to nobody but God. You feel like they make it a little harder because... Um, like you said, you know, out here cooning and buffooning. No. And, and I feel like when you, you're you doing your thing and you're doing it humbly, but, you, but you're but doing it. Mm -hmm. You ain't at every meeting where every cool guy, at, you know what I mean? You're not fighting for a seat at the cool table. Do they, you know what I mean? <laughs> Do they make it harder for you to succeed a little bit? If you could make it harder for me to succeed, you'd be controlling me. Okay. I control my own narrative. Right. You yeah. might be able to put an obstacle in front of me. Right. You ain't going to stop me, right? Mm -hmm. And last time I was trying to get at somebody's cool table was like 1993. Mm. You know, like, who are you that I, I need to impress you? Mm -hmm. 
I need to impress God. You know, I need yeah. to impress upon my daughters what, you know, what a black man looks like who handles his business. Mm-hmm. Right? So that they don't go picking out knuckleheads. My my concern is not what you think you can do to stop me. My concern is what I can do to nullify you before you start. Mm. So. so speaking of picking out knuckleheads, I actually wanted your opinion on um a little discussion that's going viral right now. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you heard, but there was a clip from a podcast and the man was saying that a high earning woman is less attractive. And he was like, you know, who wants you after you've achieved all these things? Are you familiar with this thought process? How do you feel about it? Talk to me. I'm sorry. I don't understand stupid. Okay. Yeah, me too. Dumb. Cool. 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 Yeah. No, I don't, I don't, I don't get that. If you are making money. Mm hmm. And you are handling your own. That means that, one, you're not coming to me for mine. Mm. Two, that means that you are not thinking about anything other than how I show up for you. Yeah. You know, so to me, that's a real honest relationship. My problem is I feel like the men who have this point of view or this narrative are never successful within themselves. Well, that's your problem. You're looking at adult males as men. Mm. Okay. So, for example, I, I have a I have a twenty three year old. Really? Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. my god. And and the funny thing is, like, she thinks she's grown too. <laughs> and what was crazy about that is, legally on paper, she's an adult. Right. But if I'm paying for your toilet paper and I'm I'm paying for your rent, you ain't grown. That right. That's true. We put adult males and adult females in men and women's categories and expect them to behave as such. Mm. That's a problem. So that tells me that your picker's broken. Your picker's broken? <laughs> if you can't tell the difference between a man and an adult male, yes. That's why you have a whole lot of, uh, you know, my baby daddy ain't shit. But you laid down with him and had raw sex with him. So at some point, mm. he was something. It's true. Mm. It's true. Your the picker. Honey, the honey was popping. That's what it is. <laughs> listen, that Jack Tennessee honey straight. Bro. Listen. Oh, the honey jack. Mm. Mm. The baby mama's. Well, Thank before we go any further, can we talk about the mac and cheese? Listen, oh, I'm about to say it is though. good, y'all. It's, it's damn so good. good. <laughs> There's something special about that mac and cheese. It's damn good. When you get the little crust in there too, mm-hmm. I said. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to see. You gotta portion it just right. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? You don't want to eat all the crust first. No. You need it to complement the, right. the cheese in it's at the bottom. Yeah, we gonna have, we gonna have. How you feel about it? I just want a crust infusion. Like, mm. I need chef. I need more crust. More crust, <laughs> more crust on the inside. Piece. I think we need to like lasagna fire this oh, thing. Oh, layer, so, layer, layer. You see what I'm saying? So it's oh, crust and every. That's a good idea, though. On, on the business bullies. <laughs> yeah, yeah it. <laughs> not, it don't never stop with you. No. And you, you we, we spoke behind the scenes about your, your acquisition of a empanada company. Yes, uh, Azado's Empanada Kitchen. Absolutely, out of Atlanta. Out of Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you have a lot of businesses out of Atlanta, or is no fully like your main hub, or you don't care where is that? You I just... have I have businesses on six continents. Shush. Yeah, Happy. No. No, it's it's just how it turned out. I wasn't like I'm not. Oh, I'm gonna take over the world. Look at me, every place but Antarctica, because I'm a big and bad businessman. Like, no, nah, it's just that's how it turned out. Opportunities come. I put myself in a situation and I go for it. You just go for it. Yeah. What is your prize jewel? Me. The, you are. Mm-hmm. That was a. What do you call that? Politically correct answer. Here's you don't th- have a business that you like. I'm so glad. This is my this favorite. Is, yeah, this motherfucker right here. If I, I didn't get this, I'd be. Oh, uh, you know what I mean? No, I really feel like. So there are businesses I love for different reasons, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's a business in uh, Uptown called uh, the 1225 Place, right? Mm. It's a nice venue. Um, with that business, we also have a security firm and we also have a, uh, a braiding salon. Mm. Why is that important? I got a six year old. Get her hair braided. Mm-hmm. If I own the braiding salon, I got paid for it. That's mm. You know, if I'm touring, I got a security company. It means I got to pay for it. True. If I want to have events, I have an event space. You ain't got mm. to pay for it. You catch on quick, bro. Real fast. That's it. Mm. So, like, that's the whole thing. But but my partners in that are, you know, a beautiful couple. They really support each other. They've got a lot of um, execution. Like, I love people who execute because I tell you like do this do that do this and there are certain people like but you know i was i was trying yeah. and then i'm triggered oh my <laughs> god smooth i'm so triggered oh, <laughs> I just, what, what am i supposed to do and i'm like yeah now nah, you gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> because like you just gotta do it and worry about how people feel about it later after the fact right you know i don't give a damn if you like me or not mm. 
about getting his business done. That's it. Yeah. And yeah. that's another problem with black people. We only do business with people we like. Mm. I learned that hard. Yeah, no, I, I don't care about how I feel about you because if I were to go to McDonald's and order a Big Mac, I haven't in years, thank God, but let's just say I did. I never thought about the pimple-faced kid who was feeding it to me. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I have no feelings about that. It's a transactional situation. You go to Onyx, some girls is working. It's transactional. Hey, mm-hmm. baby, you want a lap dance? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm about to get me $100 out this trick. Mm. <laughs> That's just it. It's transactional. The less we feel about what we're doing, the more we're absolutely able to execute on a different level. That's so crazy because one of the things I wanted to ask you was how important do you think it is to be a free thinker and not necessarily go with the crowds? Like, I don't want to work with him because I know everybody else is working with him. Like, mm. I want to work with this other person because I know they can execute well. I don't mind working with people who have worked with a bunch of other people. I just want to work with you in a different way. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And like differentiation comes down to you, right? You can go to two restaurants. They both serve the same thing. Like you can go to uh, Capitol Grill or you can go to Steak 48, Mm. right? Two different types of experiences, depending on what you like. Not good, not bad. It's just completely up to how you like it served. But it's a cow, right? That's been cured, slapped, aged, whatever the case may be. It's cream spinach. it's, it's, It's potatoes, but it comes down to the experience and how it's served up. So while everybody's over here, mm-hmm. I'll be over here winning. Right, right. And that's just what it is. Like by the time everybody's doing it, it's already too late. Right. That's, that's the true. thing too. And I feel like I do. I, I want to know how is it that you got into acquiring business in the mm-hmm. first place. But and and Philly is so saturated with once something is catching fire. Mm-hmm. It's like everybody jumps on it. Mm-hmm. It's a wave, literally like a tidal wave. How did you, you know, get away from that? You, ne- just, you just never got into it. I never had a Philly mentality. The hunger part, mm-hmm. the drive part, absolutely. The I got to be around you. I'm, I'm not Ariel from The Little Mermaid. I want to be with the people. Uh, are. <laughs> you know, even though I, I am like that in the way I want to reach people, mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not going to schmooze and do it. Like, to me, that's corny. You know, I want to make smart business decisions based upon what is going to make money long term. I don't do anything short term. I don't do anything quick nut. I'm not a fix and flipper. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not the guy that wants to just, you know, catch a lick. I'm not a hustler. Mm-hmm. Hustle is a dance, mm-hmm. you know. I'm a, I'm a businessman that makes smart choices. And so if I have something that's going to fix this business and make this business a lot more money, do you want to go in? Do you want to go at it on your own or do you want me to come in here and really skyrocket your situation? OK, so speaking of that, yes, you work with a lot of people over I have. Time, helping people build their brands, mm-hmm. consulting X, Y and Z. Mm-hmm. What was the most difficult situation you had to turn into? Right. So that was one thing. And then we, we built up the credit repair business. Then we started focusing on business credit. And then I realized that a lot of these people who are out here, oh, I'm going to have a credit repair agency. You know, I want to build a tax business. Yeah, but you don't understand how to structure it. And all that learning is a curve that you don't want to have to you don't want to have to get over, right. or, you know, or try to get around. So what I did was I said, let's create a concierge service so that we just set them up. They come in and it's already running for them because we've got all these folks hammering it out. Mm. You know, so Christmas morning, she went and she took her husband to a car dealership. Now, they'd already bought their dream cars and whatnot. Okay. So he takes, she takes him to the car dealership, whole family's with him. And he's like, well, what am I here for? Like, we already got our cars. Like, what is, what is this? She was like, no, this is your dealership. So she retired her husband Christmas afternoon. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So to go from, I'm not even making $10,000 in my business to doing 1.2 million annually. Wow. You know. That's heavy. But, oh my God, she would have got there a lot faster if she had listened when I told her to do things in the first place. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? And that's the part. It's never the, 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 the details of the task. It's the you getting over yourself. And you realizing that you're capable. Because if you've never seen it, it's hard to see something you've never seen in here. You don't have a vision. You had a vision. Right, yeah. Right. So like just hang on to my vision until your vision goes. All right, before we get out of here, mm-hmm. I'm a young entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. What three key steps would you tell me? Three key things, whatever, to put me on, you know, a straight path to success. Don't listen to your mother. Mm. Um when I say that, that's for everybody in your family. Well, you know, ain't nobody ever come out of here and then done did that. Mm. And it's like, yeah, of course not. iPhone 1 can't process like an iPhone 13. That part you right. were made for a different era. Yeah. So your advice is outdated. 
Mm. You know, you like a, a, a textbook three semesters ago. You're absolutely useless to me in this <laughs> right moment now, right. to take me to where I need to go. Right. So uh, all due respect to mama. Mama's wrong again. And there's something wrong with her medulla album guy. You feel me? <laughs> The, the, the second, mama's wrong again. Mama's wrong again. No, 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 Mrs. No, no, Colonel Sanders, you're wrong. No, so listen, that's high quality H2O right there. Number two, um, stop thinking you got to do everything yourself. Okay. You do not have to do everything yourself, right? Like, I own 17 companies. Mm. I don't run 17 companies. See, you got a bunch of people talking about CEOs and don't know what a CEO actually is. It's the chief executive officer. That is a hireable and fireable position. Mm. As a result... You can be ousted. Look at the guy who founded the men's warehouse and then went public, became the CEO. They mm. ousted his ass. Wow. Talking about you don't like the way you, you look. He, he don't like the way he look on the unemployment line. You feel me? Oh, my God. <laughs> so you don't have to do everything yourself. Right. Do the things that you're absolutely necessary to do for your business. Everything else you outsource. There's plenty of places in third world countries that have, you know, first world skills. Utilize those. Right. And finally, get some sleep. Mm. Uh, listen, mm. I know it's a lot of people out here telling you that, you know, you a sucker if you go to sleep. I'm going to be a sucker then on Egyptian cotton sheets. So you're going to be up all late at night trying to cram in work and trying to look up businesses and just... No. No. no just get bro. some sleep. Get some sleep. The other part of that is my body naturally wakes up at 3 o'clock because I was doing morning shows when I was a teenager. Mm. So, so you wake up at 3 in the morning. Yeah. Wow. But I'm watching YouTube, I'm, you know, I'm looking at what's happening, I'm, I'm reading a book. I read probably like four or five books a week, mm. you know, and that that's what I do. But I also make sure I'm getting at least seven to eight hours of sleep. And then say it again, please, Seven please. to eight hours of sleep. These people telling you yeah, not to sleep. sleep though. While you're sleeping, I'm up working. About I do more before nine. You are not the arms, you're not the armed forces, though. <laughs> <laughs> Needs you to, to calm that down. The, the thing of it is, all of us that have, would you say, pop in or have made I'm it. Pop moment, pop, yeah. To, yeah. Um, we have people to make us look good. So like, I, I teach moments. at Temple University. I teach social media marketing. Mm. It's my curriculum. It's my syllabus. But if you think I'm doing my own slides, you have not been paying attention. <laughs> right. there's, there's no glory in doing my own slides. It's how I present them. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so, so get out of that. Just start to rest. Watch what comes to you. And the other reason you can't rest is because you've taken jobs. Mm. That you have no business in that mm. will not value you at the level that you need to get to, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So if you're stressed out and you got more month at the end of the money, how are you gonna come up with a million dollar idea? Mm. <laughs> more month at, at the, the end, end of, of the, the money. money. I like that. I you like know what that because check the check isn't enough. It's not right. enough. No, nah, so like that's my whole thing. You have more month at the end of the money, so you can't possibly have the creative space to do what's necessary. So if you rest. And you, and you double down and you put people in place to empower you, they'll make money. Right now, I'm making money and I'm sitting here with y'all. Mm. You're not paying me for this, but the, that's the, a, the food that's a is nice payment enough. I yeah. want that. It's not a flex. We pride ourselves on them. It should place. be what everybody does. Mm. That should be the goal, but you're not going, I'm going to, I'm, I'm on my corporate hustle. I was going to work and do this. Mm -mm. You, There's you, no reason. You're never going to get there. And if you do, you're going to be too old to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's it, man. Don't listen to mama. Figure out what you absolutely need to do. And, and get, get some, some sleep. Rest. Please. Mm. Go to sleep. Absolutely. After you watch the show, though. Don't go to sleep yeah, before yeah, the show. Yeah, no, please don't sleep show. on me. Yeah, mm -mm, don't. Mm -mm. You, you know, live with regret. Don't Come do get that. these jewels. But please. We really appreciate you coming through. Man, I you appreciate know, man, the lamb show. Yeah, this, yeah, this yeah. was amazing. Yes. Definitely let the people know she where they can find thing, you. Boy, we, yeah, we absolutely. So you got you got freegamealert.com, right? Uh, I got an amazing webinar there. My, my books are everywhere. You can go to businessbullyshow.com for the rundown of absolutely everything, the podcast. Um, I'm still on all social media platforms. My Instagram has changed, but by the time this airs, hopefully my Instagram will be back. But if it's not, one monkey don't stop no show. That part. So at, at the business bully and uh, business bully TV on Instagram. So well, there you go. It's your boy Smooth. It's your girl Stormy P. We got Dave Anderson. Yeah. This is Cooking Up 215 and we out.